Today I travel to Marion, Ohio to visit the grave of former President Warren G. Harding. While in office, Warren G. Harding was thought to be a great president. He was very popular with his constituency and within the United States itself. After he left office, after his death, a number of scandals came to light. We're going to take a look at those today, take a look at his life, and visit his grave. We have got a lot of information to unpack. It is very important to me, though, that you please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment below. I love to hear from you. And uh, stick with me. To the end of the video, I have got a number, a few different things, a few different bonuses. I'm going to show you his home, President Harding's home, as well as a couple of other things. So please stick with me. Let's go visit the grave of former President Warren G. Harding. Today I travel an hour to the north of Columbus, the capital of Ohio, to Marion, Ohio. We are here to visit the final resting place of Warren G. Harding, the 29th President of the United States. I'm beginning the video by showing you all some views of the grounds. When I first arrived, I made my way around the massive monument to see the surroundings. There was an information structure in front of the monument that provided facts about President Harding and some information regarding the memorial and its design. Added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1976, the Harding Tomb construction began in 1926 and finished in 1927. The tomb is built with an open design that respected the wishes of President Harding to be buried outside. With Greek-like columns made of white marble, the tomb is the last of the elaborate presidential tombs. Warren G. Harding was born November 2, 1865 in Blooming Grove, Ohio. As a matter of fact, Harding would live in Ohio nearly his entire life except for the times that his political offices would require him to move. The Marion Star, a newspaper that Harding purchased as a young man, was built by him into a successful publication. He began his political aspirations in 1899 when he ran for and was elected to the State Senate of Ohio. He was a state senator of Ohio for four years until he was elected as the state's lieutenant governor. After an unsuccessful run for governor in 1910, he was elected to the United States Senate in 1914. He set his sights on the office of president in 1920, but was far from the front runner. His chances to win were considered to be improbable at best. At the 1920 Republican convention, the front runners could not gain the majority that they needed to become president and the campaign delegates were at an impasse. Harding's campaign steadily gained support throughout the proceedings and he became the party's nominee for president on the 10th ballot. Harding ran a front porch campaign from his home in Marion and allowed supporters and voters to come listen to him talk. The very porch that he would give his campaign speeches from, we will visit at the end of the video. Harding would win voters with his wisdom and forward-thinking policies and would win the 1920 presidential election in a landslide. Harding, who made Calvin Coolidge his vice president, was sworn into office March 4, 1921. While many establishment Republicans initially scoffed at his nomination, he very quickly realigned the party. Harding wished his inauguration to remain low profile without all the pageantry that accompanies the normal event, so he had a brief swearing-in ceremony at the White House. Harding became a popular president and was greeted with great jubilation upon his arrival in Washington. Harding appointed his cabinet and filled the seats with political power players, including two future presidents. When Harding took office, the economy was already in the midst of a recession, trying to solve the economic decline. Harding pushed for income tax cuts, which eventually happened. Harding did have forward-thinking tendencies, and the 1920s brought about great innovations and new industries for the United States. When vehicles began being mass-produced, this allowed for a boost to the other supporting industries. This helped pull the nation out of the recession. Harding would promote expanding the interstate system, automotive production, and expanding commercial aviation.
On July 27, 1923, President Harding gave a speech at the University of Washington. He called for his physician, complaining of severe upper abdomen pain. Feeling better, he made his way by train to San Francisco the next morning. Upon leaving the train, he suffered another severe episode of pain. Upon examination at the Palace Hospital, it was determined that not only did he have a heart ailment, but he was stricken with pneumonia. On August 2nd, he was allowed to sit up in the bed by doctors. Sadly, he collapsed back. Doctors tried to revive him, but were unable to do so. Warren G. Harding passed away August 2nd, 1923. The 29th President of the United States was 57. His death was attributed to a cerebral hemorrhage. Naturally, his death sent a shockwave through the nation. Harding drew a lot of admiration from the public and his death was mourned heavily through the United States. Being in San Francisco, his body traveled by train across the nation. It is reported that 9 million people across the country lined the tracks carrying him home. His body lay in state at the Capitol Rotunda before he was brought home to Marion. A horse-drawn carriage carried his body through Marion before it was placed in a receiving vault. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you the receiving vault which I visited while in Marion. And while in office, he was a popular president. And another thing that is unique to him, he is one of the very few presidents that we've had that passed away while in office. So it really came as a great shock and the nation mourned his death. You can see old clips and old videos, old pictures of that event. And you can see the outpouring of grief that he had. So he was definitely a popular president and a popular man, but you know, behind the scenes and kind of under the surface, there were some things going on. And unfortunately, in more recent years, really, some of those things have came to light. And I don't believe history is going to remember Warren G. Harding for his accomplishments as much as his scandals. Harding was able to keep his scandals under wraps during his life and in some cases went to great lengths to keep these from coming to the surface. In 1923, Harding's trusted physician alerted him to corruptions within the Veterans Bureau. Charles Forbes, the head of the Veterans Bureau, had entered into illegal and corrupt dealings with several contractors. Harding, who knew about the activity, did nothing to stop it, and even allowed the corrupt Forbes to flee to Europe. It is said that Harding did not participate in the corruption and did not condone it. The teapot scandal was related to an oil reserve in Wyoming. This reserve, known as the Teapot Dome, was one of three that were put aside for use by the Navy during a national emergency. There was a group that wanted this oil reserve to be developed and not under the care of the Navy. Harding signed an executive order that would transfer the reserve from the Navy to the Department of the Interior. There were many details regarding this scandal that I won't get into, but it was seemingly filled with controversial leases, bribes, and contracts that were awarded by seemingly less than fair means. Perhaps Harding's most notable post-life scandal that came to light was that of his involvement with Carrie Fulton Phillips of Marion, Ohio. This involvement lasted for about 15 years. A series of letters from Harding to Phillips would reveal a relationship of romantic involvement. The letters were discovered by a biographer doing research. The letters eventually made their way to the Ohio Historical Society. Some wanted the letters to be destroyed to preserve Harding's reputation, but they were ultimately donated to the Library of Congress. They were sealed until 2014. And as you can see, the grounds were really a beautiful area, and the monument surrounding his grave was a monument and a tribute befitting of a president. So I want to thank you all for joining me on today's journey. When I asked you a couple of weeks ago what you wanted to see, uh, one of the suggestions that I got was more political figures, and I thought, you know, what better way to do that than to visit the grave of a former president? And it was a great story to tell. A lot of stuff I didn't know coming into this that I learned through research and reading uh, in my preparation for this video. So I do want to thank you all for watching. Please join me on my future journeys and watch some of my past journeys. Uh, you know, we've, we've came a long way since the beginning of this channel. Please like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. I have got much more in store for you. Thank you all for joining me today, and I will see you again soon. As promised, I told you we were going to take a look at some bonus video. The Warren G. Harding home is located in Marion. The view that we are seeing now shows the porch in which the front porch campaign for president was held. 
This property also includes a small house behind it which was built by Harding for media use. The construction of the Warren G. Harding Presidential Museum is underway just behind the home. I also visited the receiving vault that held the remains of President Harding while the previously visited memorial was built. This tomb was also placed on the National Register of Historic Places and is in the adjacent Marion Cemetery. I want to thank you all once again for watching my video looking at the life of President Warren G. Harding. Please give me a like and a comment and please subscribe if you haven't. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate your support. Thank you.